hello good morning i am going to be continuing what we started about man's higher consciousness the book by hilton hotima and this is number two we're going to skip over the portion that talks about um vegetarianism uh we're going to talk about the fact that like i said if you drink some liquor or something like that and or you eat 30 donuts okay you drink liquor you eat 30 donuts whichever one you do okay you have to remember that these are luxury items okay as is um you know meat but but we're looking at the vegetarianism so let's say that you eat the donuts if you eat the donuts the best thing for you to do is to definitely take uh, an herbal type of laxative okay that's going to help your body because that's not a, it's not a natural process to eat which lets us know uh, which we have proof of that by the fact that uh, people can hide uh, pounds, 15, 20, and so on, pounds of doo-doo at a time, old poop at a time, and never remove it. Now, you might say, let me just change my diet. Let me eat more fruits, more vegetables, more this, more that. Okay, so let's look, let's look at it from a very physical outward standpoint. If you could actually see what was going on in your body, what it's hiding. All right. So let's say you let about 15 cows in your house and they shit everywhere. Excuse my language, sorry. And they poop everywhere. Let's say you let uh, 15 cows in there. You let um, a bunch of chickens in there. Uh, you let a, a whole bunch of dogs in your house and they just poop everywhere. There's stains everywhere. There's poop everywhere. And you're saying to yourself, all I got to do is bring some fruits and veggies in my house and it's going to be better. Um, no, you're going to actually have to clean the, the crap out. Okay. That is one thing that's not going to go away. It's still there until you remove it because you have the power to do so because you are a powerful human being who is responsible for everything that happens to your body. Now, everything you do to it, everything you put in it, everything you let sit in it. So back to the vegetarianism vegetarianism can have very damaging effects just like alcoholism if you're eating over abusing cereals and flour products and different things like that okay so what happens is your body will start producing more alcohol if you eat these kinds of things and you don't have anything to go with it because see people eat meat because it's heavy enough to push this alcohol thing out which is why most people recommend that you drink some liquor with your meat it's a good mixture okay so anyway the whole vegetarianism thing uh, I would say like I said if you want to eat 30 donuts go ahead and take your little laxative and then take your lots of uh, I would say I would always recommend the apple cider vinegar and plenty of water okay after you've taken your laxative now uh, if you decide and you don't you only need a little couple teaspoons of that apple cider vinegar okay you don't need to drink it now then let's say you do you do the liquor let's say you got some rum you got some tequila you was turning up you 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 did you got you got you some liquor in there okay so what you want to do is if you don't like enemas this is my recommendations because to the people who don't like enemas okay if you don't like the the enemas you need to go ahead and do the same kind of a thing you need to take that apple cider vinegar you need to take that um uh, distilled water anywhere from three cups okay to a to a lead to a whole liter uh, and so you need to drink that okay and then as well you also need that laxative I don't care if it's a fistful of raisins a fistful of uh, cranberries that's going to help you if, uh, a glass of prune juice maybe if that's what you desire but these are laxatives okay so you need to do that I've seen people who um, they, they take their liquor and in order to dilute it and because it liquor is coming out it's not going to stay in there what 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 makes liquor have its stain is old doo-doo again like I said the old doo-doo it attaches to other poisons you've got to realize the chemical components and the bonds that take place the chemical bonding that takes place poison to poison a weaker poison attaches to a stronger poison and so on and so forth so a person with alcohol issues or person who needs rehab um, they definitely 
only need to really focus on one main thing and that is the old old poison in you is attaching to a new poison which is the liquor or the alcohol okay so that's what happens with the with in the life of the weak vegetarian like i said because they have too many cereals too many grains and whatever wheat and whatever and that turns into alcohol and so you have this weak feeling like you are an alcoholic almost okay and so you don't want uh either of those situations you want to detox immediately okay so then um Let's go ahead. So we're going to skip over that chapter because I just explained it to you pretty much or the, that portion. Now, lesson number one, physical perfection. We're just going to read through the whole thing. And if you have any uh, questions at the end, please let me know. But I'm going to definitely explain everything I explain from a realistic standpoint. I'm not giving you any any BS whatsoever. So physical perfection would be physical immortality. Would be. Okay. It's not telling you that you're going to start thinking of imaginary stuff okay we're not talking about that we're talking about hundreds of thousands maybe even hundreds of millions of years ago okay and herbert spencer formulated the law of physical immortality as follows to wit so in order to understand where you where you can go what you can do what your capabilities are you have to know where you came from even if it was so so long ago that you don't even have any record okay you, you ought to know where you come from still perfect correspondence would be perfect life were there no changes in the environment, but such as the organism had adapted changes to meet and were it never to fail in the efficiency with which it met them, there would be eternal existence and eternal knowledge. Let me set my phone down. I'm going to keep reading. Now, do you get that? Eternal existence and eternal knowledge. That, that's what would be. Okay. So we're talking again historically to see, to tell a person where they come from so they can know what's about to happen. What am I going to do? That's first principles. Now. Breatharianism is physical perfection. No, we don't jump into breatharianism because we did not get this way overnight. If it took hundreds of thousands of years, you can only imagine that it's going to take about that or maybe half that if you're trying to go back in that direction. So never think that you're going to, in this life, become one because that's all fake. So man came into physical existence a perfect breatharian. You can practice breatharianism. I've seen people whose bodies can adjust to certain things and go, they've gone long periods without food. And I do mean a decade or, or year or whatever. Okay, they have records of this thing in other countries, not in America, not Caucasian, blah, 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 blah. Okay, but just because that happened does not mean that it was the right time that it was comfortable, that it was everyday life for that individual. It could have been torture. You don't know. So God breathed into his uh, nostrils. So man came into physical existence, a perfect breatharian. God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living entity, Genesis 2 and 7, okay? Uh, nothing was lacking and nothing more was needed. Again, this is Hilton Hotima. Uh, the breath of life supplied all the requirements of animation. Again, we're talking history. Hundreds of thousands of years ago. I have to continue to re remind you so that you don't start. Because I know when I first read it, my mind was going, uh, you know, like, oh, right now, right now, right now. No, not not right now. Not in this time. <laughs> the breath area needs air only and nothing more to sustain his body. In that state of physical perfection, man has no other wants. The less man needs, the more he becomes like gods. Who use nothing and are immortal, said the ancient masters. Who were the ancient masters? Ancient Egyptians, of course. I mean, that's where most of this knowledge comes from. All right. Poverty, want, and sickness are the work of man. The more you eat, the more you want to eat. The more you buy, the more you want to buy. The more you make, the more you want to spend. Okay. They are the products of his habits, which correspond with his desires. He increases his burdens as he multiplies his wants, which is why, if you can see, some people are financially very stable, very healthy, because they do what? They still use the same mentality that I'm going to get what I need and I'm going to save and invest the rest. And that is amazing. That is what you're supposed to do. Okay, you see people who, ah, I got a million dollars. Whoa, I got money to blow. And it's like, yeah, you, <laughs> you think you do. But then you're going to realize you're still Beth Ann, you're still Suzanne, you're still uh, whoever you are. And, and it's going to get back to however you have been uh, consuming since childhood. 
okay if you are a large consumer of this or that then that's where your spending is and that's what you've got to work on because your life is a, a long sentence of navigating and seeing what can I change for the better now if you can change some things now that's great if you can change it over a period of 10 years that's great as well always be patient with yourself small changes are permanent small gradual changes are permanent the ones that are abrupt usually there's something that's gonna fall back down you jump up real high you're gonna fall is hard you know what I mean now the breath of life every living thing must breathe the air in order to live so if i endured a three-month fast you best believe i have been practicing fasting for about five years before and i was willing to remove the waste every day that is a big thing you are not going to be able to endure a long fast if you are not willing to clean the mess out so no 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 we are going to do the baby steps one day 24 hour fast 48 hour fast 72 hour fast that is it and with juice and with enemas if you can only do if you can't do enemas your fast should last you about 12 hours all right to keep things moving in solid form all right so uh the leaves are in this sense the lungs so talk about the tree breathes the air through its leaves the leaves are in this sense the lungs of the tree insects breathe the air through tiny openings in their bodies frogs breathe the air partly through the skin fishes breathe the air by taking oxygen out of the water remember i told you when you're drinking water you're actually supplying some air for your organs and that is a wonderful thing to do okay uh air cells of the lungs where believe it or not the water is just as alive as the air that you're breathing okay water is excellent okay so and do not become extreme extreme if you love cookies eat the dent excuse me eat the cookies if you love steak eat the steak i'm telling you right now it's so much more important to realize what do i need to get rid of what is in me before you start focusing on how do i change my diet because that will come almost automatically remember we talked about the sinus being the third eye and if that is not clean you will not receive the revelation that you need so instead of you questioning and reading everything some things are going to be able to just come to you once you're clean now cleaning is a hard process as well so if cleaning if if you do a 10-year detox and you know you will no longer have snot i'm talking about something gradual not something extreme extremities are dangerous so if you did something gradually for 10 years like me personally i did enemas once a day for 16 years but i ate whatever i desired to eat at the time if i wanted broccoli if i wanted steak if i wanted chicken if whatever i wanted i ate it because i was able to trust my instincts at that time being clean colon clean mouth so on and so forth so if i did get a stuffy nose i knew oh well i've been eating that if i got a stuffy nose during a fast then i knew that came that was coming out after let's say after my after one month and a half so after about 40 days i did a dry fast during my liquid juice fast with enemas every day and during that time mucus started coming out nasal i was uh 23 23 i'm 35 now uh it started coming out nasal it started coming <laughs> in my throat <clears throat> what in the world is that and it, it started coming out of my other openings okay so i realized something was in there and i also realized um the the the, the myths that we have in the medical industry okay because once it was out no more problems it was not a an infection it was not a disease it was just an elimination it was just bye bye you're out of here because i'm already fasting right so you can quickly contaminate your system if you are eliminating and you decide to put something else in there that it's it's definitely not conducive to now eliminating meaning like a cold or cancer or whatever so let's continue to read about these insects okay uh, it says the correlation between the insects and the leaves on the trees and all of that it says hardly anyone understands this science of breathing 
which all should know and practice. It is the air that renews our, our blood and brings life to all our organs. It is the air that helps us helps to give us balance and to keep our physical and psychic functions in order. So air pressure is what helps people when they're working out. There's air pressure working to move some things out quickly. Now, most people use only a third, a quarter, or even a fifth of the, of the lungs total surface. So a deep breath would be just like this here. Now let's say I'm fasting and I'm clean because I have no enemas. My, my breath is going to be about three to four seconds longer. Okay, so that should let us know what is stopping our air. There's something already in there, which also weakens and shortens vitality. So modern man is the degenerate descendant of the breath area. How many years ago? Millions, probably, <laughs> which which is just an essential fact that Caucasians have only been here for, I don't know, some thousands, maybe less than 10,000 years. Okay, so... But the millions of years that man has inhabited the earth, his environment and the many habits he has formed have forced his body to adapt itself under the law of vital adjustment to many evil conditions and harmful substances in order to survive, all of which are foreign to the body and injurious in character. This is why we understand addiction. Things that are what? Foreign to the body and injurious in character meaning that they're dangerous but we are recommended to take them because there's no immediate effect we trust it like medicine like meat and if you look at what happens to meat, you put it in a pot or something like that and just leave it there for a few days okay and then you'll see no flies got in here but I see some mold uh, I see maggots you know whatever and you'll realize, wow, meat does not digest for anywhere from two months to six months. So most people, that's why they give up meat so easily. Um, even if you don't, there's things you can do because your body is so full of water to help move it along. Like I said, you've got raisins, you've got laxative type of things, um, and you've also got detoxification type of things if you don't like animals. But water best thing to move it all out okay stages of degeneration in fact every fact of living existence the law of vital adjustment the evidence contained in ancient scriptures all prove without an exception that modern man is the product of descending evolution which is devolution okay so um it says the scanty evidence that has survived from the remote past shows that modern man has slowly descended through the five stages. One, breatharianism. Two, liquidarianism. Three, fruitarianism. When I say slowly, I mean 500,000 years, another 800,000 years for liquidarianism, another million years for fruitarianism, another even longer, maybe like 2 million years for veg vegetarianism. And then on to where we are now probably no more than about 10 to 20 thousand years okay so that should explain a lot to you why people are reverting back to the old way because instant death is <laughs> and premature death are not fun things okay so breatharian indicates a plant and when i say carnivorism i do not mean that oh be strict don't eat any meat you know type of thing i mean that some people are doing things in abundance that were only meant to be enjoyed as a luxury during, you know, a sacrificial time or holiday seasons or three days through four days a week. Not every meal every day. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So some things, you know, when it's too much and then, you know, when it's time to push yourself in the other direction, you sleep too much. You're going to have to stop that all of the sleeping. You, you, you lie too much <laughs> you know in our society you really need to stop immediately okay because some people do not tolerate that at all uh you 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 what you have sex with too many people you i mean these are just this is just an example to you that some things have 
immediate correspondent reactions that you may not see right away, but it's it's piling up. There's gonna be there's gonna be a consequence. It's going to be have chains linked up together and all of it's going to come at you at one time. And you're going to be like, cancer? What in the world are you talking about? You're going to think they're lying, but they're actually accurate. A tumor? What? But you told me I was supposed to be eating thus and thus and thus and thus and thus. Okay. So breatharian indicates a plant or animal. We're not going to talk about plants and animals, okay? That neither eats nor drinks and subsists entirely on the substances contained in the air. It is surpa uh, surprising to know that how many such plants and animals there are. Now, uh, talk about he's talking about the Spanish moss. We're gonna skip that too because he's he's very he's trying to be demonstrational about nature. Magnetism, okay, in our work nutrition the nutritional myth, okay, we stated that no chemist can find in the ground it is currently uh, like 11, almost 12, something like that in the afternoon. And I, you know, I don't need breakfast and stuff. I just had a fistful of, uh, cranberries today. It was excellent. All right. So chemists can find, and I ain't skinny either. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I got some thickness. Right. I'm not starving. Okay. I feel good. See what causes a person to deteriorate is those old poisons once those are out you develop a level of thickness like a baby <laughs> all right and baby soft skin to go with it <laughs> all right so um no chemist can find in the ground in which grows a giant tree the ash minerals carbon wood and chlorof chlorophyll contained in the body of the tree and its leaves so the the soil does not match the trees no content whatsoever nor does a tree consume the soil in which it stands so it does not eat okay now this is not talking about stop eating okay stop eating and all that shit it's not saying that it's telling you where you come from okay you receive electromagnetic circuit you relieve you receive electricity every day for energy for strength for all of that that which is why most people feel better once they get out of their house they feel tired and slumped and this and that once they get up, get moving, especially if the sun is out, they are feeling great. People in colder states tend to be a little more heavier than people in hot hot places, you know, because the electricity in their body and the cells are flowing and able to get rid of a lot of things that don't belong there. Again, we are not going to st stay on this subject of eating right now. We're going to talk about something very important and it is called spiritual potentiality to physical actuality the next topic scholars hold that in physical perfection man was entirely free of all wants and desires the needs and requirements of his body were fully supplied by the air the pure air and the sunlight of his perfect environment okay that perfect state was a condition precedent to his coming into uh, physical being it was a co the cosmic perfection of his environment that made possible his evolution from spiritual potentiality to physical actuality. It is an established fact that something cannot come from nothing. Men could not become a physical entity had he not existed as a spiritual potentiality, which took, takes us back to Genesis where God created the soul of man first, then the body. All right. There, uh, it's his spirit, excuse me, then the body. There must be a precedent uh, for every subsequent a cause for every effect so the cause whether first or last or anywhere along the chain of causes must be comprehensive equal of the fact of the effect excuse me the stream cannot rise above its source okay it if, if the rivulet can flow but an inch higher than the sufficiency of its cause there's no reason why it should not climb the mountain top and increase by the force of its own intensity as is said of disease so no effect can produce its own cause so you're not going to heal or cure my disease until you actually remove it medical science okay and i don't mean cutting me open i mean starting with the bowels okay that's the stopper the unstopper okay that's that's the start then the things that are that are intrusive and
targets and, and tumors and things, those things will retract and go back, travel back into the bowels and back out. That's just how it works. Okay. Now, so no effect can produce its own cause. The universe could not create itself, which is equivalent to the admission that no part thereof could create itself. Universal existence is eternal existence. What appears as the physical world, which we call nature, is the materialization of spiritual potentialities. So everything by faith. You know, I mean, that's just, that's just the obvious part. Okay? So uh, when you speak something, your spirit is actually doing some work. You think that words have no power. You think, oh, you know, seeing is believing. Actions speak louder than words. Not always. Okay? Had man not existed spiritually, he had never became a physical reality. And his appearance as a physical entity is conclusive proof of die perfection of his environment at the time of his physical beginning. That environment had to and did possess the effect, the perfect powers and requirements that evolved man, not from an ape, but from spiritual potentiality to physical actuality. It fulfilled every need, every demand, every requirement of his physical being. Had anything been lacking, it had been fatal. The way to improve physical man. Advanced scholars point out that there could have been in man's physical beginning no unfilled wants. Otherwise, physical being had been impossible. They showed that the only way to improve physical man is to reduce his wants and to dec decrease his economic burden. The physical science is not interested in any course that raises man to a higher plane. For nothing must be done, nothing must be allowed to happen that will disturb or derange the fixed order, social order of civilization. So they say. This order is the product, product of ages of planning and scheming. It depends upon and is sustained by man's wants and desires and the constant effort made to promote and increase them. So the constant effort made to promote and increase your wants and desires is called what? Propaganda, right? Sales pitches, all right? Um, commercials billboards <laughs> all right let's keep it going so um it it depends upon and is sustained by man's wants and desires and the, and the constant effort to promote and increase them to that end all education is directed what does man want what does man desire we are going to build a system they said that will help increase the wants and desires of men, of people, and increase our income. Boom, boom, boom. So if people start to desire more wisdom, then I'll be a very rich woman, won't I? <laughs> anyway, yeah, I don't. we'll pray about that one. <laughs> Every branch and department of civilization leads away from perfection. The movement away from perfection begins with the child in school and continues all through life. So-called civilized view. On January 12, 1951, Frank W. Abrams, chairman of the board, Standard Oil Company of, Jer of New Jersey, made an address before the National Citizens Commission for Public Schools, and his address was published and widely circul circulated. Among other things, he said, there can be no doubt that we are talking about something very fundamental to business when we talk about education. If only to maintain and expand its markets, the business world has at least as uh, big a stake as anyone in the achievement of an educated, productive, and tolerant society. There is definite correlation between education and the consumption of commodities. Education has done more to create markets for business than any other force in America, which moves right back to what we said. The movement away from perfection begins with the child in school and continues all through life. So, this is the orthodox view. And, according to that view, the purpose of education is to maintain and expand the markets of business and to create a demand for commodities. Now, the slave master teaches you, you will learn what I tell you to learn, you will do what I tell you to do, and that is it. 
when that has never been the way to go. There is love, there is peace, there is harmony. And there's always the ability to rise to the next level. Always. So this is our history. We need to learn about that. As human beings, not as <laughs> whatever these people who think they're taking over something. All right. So it says the constant cry of commercialism is to consume more, create new markets and demand and new demands, promote the production of commodities, employ more wage slaves, increase the economic burden. Why the truth is suppressed. The art of scientific living is so light, lightly regarded that it receives no attention. He who is so far ahead of the multitude as to oppose the social pattern is promptly silenced, disgraced, and liquidated. And the press carries a large headlines proclaiming that an enemy of social progress has been found and jailed, the deceived multitude believes. One's teaching may be in harmony with God's plan of life, the law of perfection, and the science of cosmic e economy meaning that you don't deserve to be rotting in some facility but that you deserve to be healed and live a nice uh enjoyable life okay that is your right so but that teaching does not harmonize with civilization's artificial world nor support its social pattern Therefore, it cannot be accepted and supported by any institution or any form of government. Hmm, does that inc include YouTube? Will we find that out? It must be suppressed for the good of the people. Quote. Encore. Tell us how long man's created wants and unnatural desires will mean money for commercial commercialism. And we will tell you how long man will remain in his present condition of degeneracy and economic slavery. So, um, economic freedom. It is interesting and important to note that as man moves back toward primal perfection, his wants toward, I didn't say he becomes, okay, his wants decline and his economic burdens decrease. We thus learn what these burdens are and whence they came. We see them as the product of man's created wants and unnatural desires, which perfect man had not man has produced them and he can destroy them and like i said if i destroyed my addictions and desires for this that and the other then anybody 